And on tonight's roundtable, Maura Carlin will discuss the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission in the village of Mamaroneck. Hello, I'm Maura Carlin. Welcome to the roundtable. Tonight I'm joined by Tony Gelber, the chair of the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission in the village of Mamaroneck, and by Jennifer beanstock Cohn, the vice chair also of the HCZMC, as it's often known as. You, of course, can always join our conversation. The ways you can contact us live is on your screen right now. So I hope you will join us. So my first question is, what does the HCZMC, or the Harbor, Co Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission, do? And what well, is it? <laughs> well, thank you for inviting us. Um, we're pleased to be here. And the Harbor Coastal Zone Management mm -hmm. Commi Commission, basically we administer what's called the LWRP, the Local Waterfront Revitalization Plan, which is, although it's called a plan, it's law in Mamaroneck, and it deals with the management of our coastal, wa our coastal and riverine waters. So you deal with uh, the sound, basically, or where the sound meets the rivers? Our, our LWRP is unusual in the state of New York in that it deals with the entire village property because the three the rivers that run through the property, that whole watershed, the Mamaroneck River, the Sheldrake. Sheldrake, and the Blind Brook, that whole watershed is part of our LWRP because all those waters drain into Long Island Sound. And so this, these LWRPs are based on what in, in our community, all the waters that drain into Long Island Sound. So the rivers and the Long Island Sound. So given that that's the area you, you deal with, what is it you do with respect to, is it development, is it use, is it, you know, you can water ski here and, and sail there? Or? Jen, why don't you? Okay, yeah. so yeah. Half, the, half the area of the village of Mamaroneck is actually water. And so our local waterfront revitalization program touches, it has 44 policies and, and the plan for revitalization and use of the property is, it, it involves every aspect of what goes on in the village of Mamaroneck from building to redevelopment to construction to renovations to anything that would have any kind of impact on our local waters. So do you get involved with things like um, the Mamaroneck Beach and Yacht Club proposal or the Hampshire proposal or where somebody has a house on the water and they want to divide the land and make four houses in that location? Ab absolutely. So anytime a project like that would come, it would come before planning board initially of the village of Mamaroneck and then would come before Harbor Coast and Zone Commission in order to make sure that whatever they're planning is consistent with our local waterfront revitalization program. And those policies cover protection of wildlife, of natural resources, of, of the fish and wildlife habitats to make sure that any, pro any planned program, any planned development or redevelopment is consistent to not create flooding issues. Um, and, and in the village of Mamaroneck, I think we're all very familiar with the fact that we have several flooding issues. And we are trying as a commission and within the village to alleviate as much as possible any, any further flooding. So how can your commission prevent further flooding? I mean, are you trying to encourage water from the rivers, let's say, to go into the sound? or to prevent the sound from um, overflowing during a big storm. Can you give some examples of what that means? Well, basically... It's a great question, right, by the so, way. Right, and so pretty much what we, we deal with is that when the, an applicant comes before us, an applicant is usually doing either a renovation or a new construction. And when we look at those properties, we generally look at them from a, a, a point of view of stormwater and sanitary, right? And so. With stormwater, what we try to do is see if we can maintain as much of the water on the property as possible. And that's by, we call them kind of green infrastructure techniques. The code pretty much calls it permeable surfaces. So you're trying to keep the water on the property and not flowing into the sound? Right, so, exactly. right, so it's called retention or detention, right? So retention 
you get retained. Um, detention is it, it's kept on the property forever. So either we hold it until the storm kind of abates and then it kind of manages the flow coming off the property or we try to keep it on the property by letting it percolate into the ground or into what we are these, they have these tanks that they use that keep the water on the property. So that's one of the techniques. Um, and we want to prevent overbuilding of the of the properties in order to limit impervious surfaces. We want to make sure that if someone is developing a property that that proper techniques and best practices are used to prevent impervious surfaces that, that would allow the water to run off the property and potentially flood somebody else's property. So do you get involved in setting what should be the FIR, I forget what it stands FAR, for? Florida Area Ratio. Right, because if you're creating impervious surfaces by, by building up or by putting in a pool or by creating a patio, do you get involved at that level? That's more a zoning issue. The ZBA is responsible for FAR. Um, we definitely are interested in pervious surfaces and impervious surfaces, but we really prefer to allow the zoning board to do their job, and we try to stay in our lane. They stay in their lane. Planning board stays in their lane. We try to work together by each of us, each board, each commission staying within our own lanes and that creates a better working environment for the entire village. Are the, go ahead, Tony. Another aspect of, of, of kind of water control is wet, what's called wetlands or wetland buffers, right? And, and there's so, a lot of wetlands by Hampshire. Right, there's a, a lot of wetlands all over right. the okay. village. Right, absolutely. <laughs> there's a lot of, and there's tidal wetlands, which means it's sound or non tidal freshwater wetlands, right? And both of those, the regulations are fairly strict that you need to protect the wetlands to the maximum extent practicable and possible. And so, again, the idea was that a wetland can absorb water. So this keeping the water on the property is key to, to, to reducing flooding. Um, we have actually, oh, we're gonna wrap up this segment and come back in a moment. Uh, stay with us, we're gonna take a quick break. Um, we'll be back. Okay. Do you need space for a meeting, conference, or presentation? LMC TV has what you need. Our 768 square foot studio space is ideal for many types of productions, readings, recitals, rehearsals, and workshops. The space has video recording capability, as well as daylight temperature lighting, green screen, and stage. Two additional rooms at 208 and 156 square feet can be used for any of your needs. Auditions, meetings, classes, workshops, one-on-one -on -one instructions, and more. Both rooms feature video monitors with Chromecasting capability, making presentations a breeze. To reserve one or more of our spaces, contact us at reserve at lmctv.org. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back. I'm talking to Tony Gelber and to Jennifer Beanstock Cohn, who are on the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission. Uh, and we're going to talk about what you referred to as the LWRP, the Local Waterfront Revitalization Program, which I understand it is also is 1984. Yes. Is that right? Right. Um, so you said that, if I understood correctly, there are 44 principles or policies, policies that you need to apply. Um, how do you, you know, you raised something towards the end that which was to protect and preserve. preserve. That's kind of broad. <laughs> um, is it really subject to interpretation? Well, the, um, the 44 policies, several of them were, are based in a, in a state coastal 
plan that then got passed down to villages and towns. And of those 44 policies that the state has, we have about 40 that are active in our LWRP. Each one of them has the statement of the policy and an explanation of how it should be applied. And so that helps with, with the principle. Um, but the, the policies, and I'll give you just an example, policy 23 is protect and preserve resources. And it means historic resources, scenic resources, uh, natural resources. And then part of the plan is, part of the plan is documents and uh, bodies of water that need to be protected. And so as you look at this protection, it's, it's fairly specific. And Jen and I are trying to administer this law kind of the way it was written and the intent. And for example, any property that's over 50 years old, if it's eligible to be on the State Historic Preservation Register or the National Register, really needs to be protected. And that's very specific in these policies. Another part of that historic policies, if, it's, if a property is within 500 feet of the boundary of an existing historic property, it needs to be protected and preserved. So although there is quite a bit of interpretation, there's also very specific uh, information in this plan that, as I said, we are, gonna, we are trying to administer it within the guidelines of the plan. Now, in the past, my understanding is there have been controversy, controversies or controversial decisions made by the commission. Um, if the policies are set and explained, why do you think that was or why is it not the case now? Well, well go ahead. A lot of times people will, build, will buy a, purchase a property on the, la on the waterfront and they want to build a structure that they don't realize is within a wetlands buffer or sometimes even within the wetlands. And although in the past, in the distant past, that type of development construction might have been allowed, um, we tried to develop a, a, another way of, of allowing them to improve their property without negatively affecting or adversely impacting the wetlands. So you see yourself as working with people to find a solution as opposed to Absolutely. saying no? It is our goal and our job to work with people and help people understand and, and develop their properties to the, to the best extent possible for both themselves and the village. Right. John, and me, I would just want to interrupt right. because John on Facebook uh, has a question for you. Are there any plans to address the new bench pond at the West Basin? I'm not familiar with that area, so I will leave it to you to tell us where he's talking about. The bench pond at the West Basin. Well, I, I think it's not currently before us. Okay. And so when an app, when and if an application does come before us, it would absolutely be uh, relevant and, and would be considered under the 44 policies of the LWRP. For me and for other people watching, where is this? So if you, so if you um, well, the West Basin, as, as you know, if you're standing on Boston Road and looking out, the, the basin to the right is the West Basin. And so okay. that's the basin closest to... Uh, it's not Rushmore, it's Orienta. Orienta. Orienta right. That's the West Basin. So um, right now, as Jen said, we don't have an application before us, and I'm not, I, neither one of us are aware of that particular property, which we probably, if it was before us, we couldn't discuss it. But I just wanted to go back to a minute to say that we are trying to work with people, and the goal of this LWRP is to advance the 44 policies, right? And so we're not supposed to take to diminish one policy and promote another policy. So it's supposed to be moving all 40, in our case, about 40 policies forward for together. this together, for this protection, preservation, and development of um, local waterfront redevelopment program. And so part of this whole LWRP was um, the, 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 the redevelopment of, of declining marine. Like we have, a, we have a very unusual harbor, right? 
we have marine industry in Mamaroneck, right? We have Director's Boat Yard, we have all of our other boat yards. Director builds ships, it's just so unique. And that this unique quality and our scenic quality, we have so many great resources. And, and our, our role as administrators is try to, to enhance and promote these policies to protect and enhance those policies, both for the public and private. Does the entire village of Mamaroneck fall within your commission? Basically. Yes. Pretty much all. <laughs> yes. Um, so the LWRP um, is almost 35 years old. Is there talk about taking another look at it? Yes, there is. <laughs> and in fact, yes. yeah, we ha there. And Jen and I, pretty much, we've been on the board for, or on the commission for about a year. We're new new champions of it, but um, there is uh, a draft revision in the works, which we haven't been asked to review yet. I have a copy on my shelf of binders, which I haven't read yet. But um, yes, it is, and, and documents, as you know, need to kind of be living documents. And so, uh, yeah, we, we would be happy to look at what's coming down the road. And I think that in general, laws, some of the laws at least that our past will come before us for what we call this consistency review. Right, is we're going to come back to okay. that in a moment. We're going to take a very quick break. You can all get a snack and come on back, and we're going to continue our discussion about the LWRP and the HCZMC. <laughs> Stay with us. LMC TV Media Center is the spot for your next party. Lights, camera, lift off. The possibilities are endless. Space adventures, video gaming, whatever they imagine LMC can achieve. Kids of all ages have fun making their own videos in our professional TV studio. LMC TV is the perfect spot for your creative kid to celebrate with friends and make a memory that will last forever in video. Party themes can range depending on their desire. Fun news shows, music videos, stop motion, overall silliness, our cameras can capture it all. Contact us to book a party today. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watcha. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. We're talking water. <laughs> Actually, I'm just going to shorten it. So you're talking about dealing with the coastline and the w LWRP, looking at where it stands today versus the uses and the things to preserve. Have things changed in the last 35 years? Well, things have changed, but I think the, the basic need for this preservation of resources in Mamaroneck has not changed. And if you look at the resources, again, the historic, scenic, natural resources, this wonderful shoreline and rivers that we have, the protection of those hasn't changed. What has changed, I think, is the amount and nature of development, right? And so we had the a lot of- Ever-increasing density. Right, ever-increasing density and development. And sometimes that's at the expense of nature, as we all know. And so this trying to balance these needs of what do we need to preserve to keep our community beautiful and wonderful and still help people with their properties and their development is a balancing act. And um, I think, you know, the, this LWP is, is designed to, to just try to promote them all. And then if we get a revision, we'll see if that revision looks consistent with what the original intent was and the current status of affairs. You said if you get a revision, who would be giving you a revision? Well, at the, at the moment, I'm pretty sure there's a, a, a revision document. So the whole village is going through a comprehensive planning ah, you exercise. Mean it's part of the master plan. Right. Well, master I think planning. this LWRP revision started a little bit different to that, but it may be wrapped into that process at the, at the moment. I'm not sure about that, honestly, so I can't say that. So, yeah, I'll stop there. Are there particular things that you would not allow? to be done in the village? <laughs> well, I think there are a number of things <laughs> that, that you could not do. You could not um, build in the middle of Van Amridge Pond. 
you, you could. <laughs> Um, okay. You you, uh, you would not be permitted to um, to extend a dock far out into the harbor. There are certain dredging guidelines. There are um, you would not be able to uh, dump your storm water or groundwater on someone else's or storm water on someone else's property. Um, you would not be able to cover an entire lot with um, impervious material. Um, that Are those would, things that actually come up as proposals? Um, they used to, not so much anymore because I think builders, developers, private homeowners are doing an excellent job of really caring for the village and the, and the and the careful and considerate development of the village. So I, I think everyone really is doing a very good job. And I also think that our building department does an excellent job of working with applicants to go through applications and make sure that they are filling out the forms properly and then they come to us and then we tell them what else we could potentially need. And, and it's a back and forth process until the project is where we want to see it. Is it more of a discussion than a very much so. rub, you know, yes or no? Absolutely. Right. It, it's, it's very it, much right. a discussion. It's a very iterative process. And I think sometimes applicants don't realize that. And that one of the reasons we wanted to come here tonight, and thank you for letting us come, is that this whole process is pretty complicated. If you look at this document, it's a thick document, but this people who think they can come in and it's gonna be yes, it's gonna get stamped, yes, or it doesn't really happen because there are four, five other commissioners besides Jen and myself, and there's lots of smart people in our village who um, send us comments and letters also. And so this iterative process, as Jen says, it, it helps get the best product at the end of the day for both the private person and the preservation of the public resources that we, we have. Are there other boards or commissions that you really coordinate with? We definitely try to coordinate with um, all of the other land use boards. Uh, we all, as I said before, we do try to stay in our own lane, but plan that any project will come to the planning board first, and then it will come to us so for specific consistency or inconsistency finding. Are so. there any other matters that, that your commission gets involved in? Well, we, we kind of get involved in a very broad, uh, it, amount of issues and one thing that comes to mind is last summer I guess it was there was a really it was a, a citizen complaint about mosquitoes yes. and mosquito spraying right and being that this or lack thereof right right or lack thereof correct <laughs> and, and how to properly and how to you know what really what was consistent with this LWRP and when we looked at that particular uh, it was really a complaint it was okay. We had there were things the West County was supposed to be doing, and then there were things the village was doing, and it was a bit, you know, left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing to a bit, and so just the fact that it came before us and it got discussed among the commissioners, and then again an iterative process. It went back, and the village manager had to look up some stuff, and they called the county. So that process to me makes, at the end of the day, a, a better community. And did you get involved because whatever was going uh, into the community would likely end up in the water? Oh, absolutely. it absolutely would. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely would. And we absolutely welcome uh, residents, village residents, to come to our meetings. Uh, if they have a particular issue, please bring it before us. We are very interested in hearing any concerns and we'll do our best to resolve those concerns. Right. You two have talked about how well you seem to be working together and enjoying it. But what made you decide to volunteer to be on this board together? And you were just appointed chair and you're vice chair, which has to take up a lot of time. Yes, well, it does. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I though we I was not appointed chair, oh, right? Okay. So the way this committee works is right, we elected him. Right. The, the commission elected him. Right, and then I nominated Jen, and the commission not elected Jen as vice chair. So, but you were appointed to the commission. Yes. Right. I was okay. asked by the current mayor a year ago to, to join the committee, and 
I don't know how. So, and so, I, right. Right, but I want, I would, if we could just go back for a second. One of the other things that we're supposed to do and which we do do is that, and Jen used a good word yesterday when we were discussing a, a matter, there's other state agencies, the Department of State and there's the Department of Environmental Conservation. So if there's an Army Corps, a federal permit required, which when you do any work in these tidal wetlands, sometimes an Army Corps permit is required. So if an Army Corps permit is required, the Department of State does consistency from the state level, RE the Army Corps permit, right? So this coordination of efforts between kind of the federal government through, through the state and then the New York State DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, they they look at wetlands and they have a whole bunch of, and they have to issue wetlands permits. So this coordination between the village and the state and kind of the army, all supposed to work together. And so we get asked to, to send comments back to those agencies. Now, in general, when you look at these laws, many times the federal law is the weakest, the state is a little more stringent, and then local laws are even more stringent. And so I work in Brooklyn, which is New York City, and what we find there is that many times New York City laws are more stringent than any place else in the country. So in our community, this similar structure exists, and so we have to look at this at LWRP and then see if, if the action is consistent with our policy. So that whole coordination effort is time consuming, as you kind of mentioned a minute ago. Okay, we're actually out of time because we've covered a lot of water <laughs> yes. instead of ground. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for watching. We, but you should stay tuned. We've got more of the local live stories coming up.